For those of you who follow motorsport, I don't think I need to tell you why the Dakar Rally is such a big deal. It always has been, I think it always will be, and this year in particular, so much has been said about just the level of that competition, how arduous the whole event was. And we got fantastic news because conquering all of that tough terrain is India's own Arvind KP, who is with me right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back, me. literally, because I know you've just <laughs> arrived back in the country a few hours ago. Yes. Um, wonderful to see you and heartiest congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, first of all. And uh, thank you. Thank you for the wishes. It's, like I said, it's a big deal for anybody who even tracks it. So, of course, for somebody who's participating or first dreams of participating and then finally gets there. I remember when you were embarking on your first endeavor, is when we uh, first met and spoke about why it's so important for you personally. Yes. You know, being there, experiencing it over the years, I know you learnt a lot, you got a lot out of it, but there was always that whole thing about completing it. Uh, you've done it. Yeah, uh, definitely, like you said, you know, until you get there, you don't really know what, uh, what it has to offer to you. So you can never be prepared for uh, what, what it has to throw at you. So I think uh, this time uh, the preparation was really good and uh, the past two years have helped me how to uh, train myself and how hard I should work towards, uh, you know, just to get to, get to the finish line. And uh, like you said, this time was good and uh, we got it done. But such a lot of, you know, hard work in terms of just pure physical discipline and training. Then of course with the bike and, uh, you know, after that about conquering the various stages and understanding or, or researching and studying how to approach it. All of that is on one side, but then what the actual day throws up is something else, right? Yes. Because you never know where there's a stone or where there's, you know, some, something that is going to trip you up. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's an unfair question, but how do you prepare for that unknown? Uh, see, you, you just hope that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's not a stone hiding behind the sand and, you know, waiting for you. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it depends on how focused you are. Uh, that's, that's the reason we train a lot. So when you train a lot, you, you tend to focus really well on uh, what is actually coming up ahead because when, uh, when you lose that uh, slightest focus is when you can you know, uh, finish your rally completely. So like I said, uh, we train, we train, we train and you focus on what is coming up ahead and even if there is a rock, you kind of you prepare yourself to deal with it. And uh, with so many years of training and so many years of riding background, it kind of helps uh, to deal with what is thrown at you. So I think uh, that is also a part of yeah, uh, A lot of that is then mental training as yes. well, right? Uh, the, the whole aspect of, let, let's take the example of a rock coming up, you know. Um, what it does to the machine can be something mechanical. What it does to you, of course, can be much worse in terms of an injury. Um, do, you, do you train to fall right? I mean, how do, how do you try and prepare for that eventually? See, I, uh, luckily so you don't for break bones. Yeah, you know, luckily for up. me, I've been an athlete all my life. So I'm kind of, you know, it's instinctive that when you fall, you kind of roll over and not take the complete impact of, uh, of a fall. So when you, when you don't really know how to fall, uh, it's very easy to, uh, you know, break bones. Though with so much training that, you know, uh, the past few years I've broken many bones. But other than that, uh, like you said, yeah, you do train with, uh, you know, uh, proper reception and uh, hand and eye coordination and, you know, how to roll over and uh, not, to, not to be stiff uh, on the bike. So you can minimize the impact and minimize the damage that can cause to you. But uh, like you said, when it is up to the machine, I think uh, when you hit a rock, uh, it's, there, are, there are major consequences like you can break a wheel or you can break something uh, major on the machine and which can end your race. But uh, yeah, I've, I've had uh, such instances in the race as well, but uh, wasn't really major. But I can say uh, luck also has to play a part uh, other than the training. But uh, yeah, we, pre we prepare for everything which is, uh, which is up. Yeah. Tell me though, I mean, the last few editions when you were there, um, you know, of course, just as hard in terms of what everything that was being thrown at you on a daily basis. Um, how do you take, the, you know, there's a, obviously a huge amount of disappointment when you can't finish or yes. when you know that you, you're out. Yes. What do you, how do you take that and turn it into sort of energy and focus for the next year or the, even the next event? It doesn't have to be the Dakar. Yeah, uh, see, when, when you fail at something, I think uh, it kind of uh, drives you more uh, to, do, uh, to do better and to work more harder to get to that goal again. So I think it's, it's been, uh, it's not just me, but it's the team around me and the people around me, you know. Uh, they've, been, uh, they've been very supportive and uh, whenever I've, I've doubted myself, 
uh, they made sure that you know I, it was possible for me and uh, they believed in me and made me realize that I could do it so I think uh, I, I've, I've always had good people doing that to me and I've always been in a good pace and uh, which didn't really uh, you know get to me you uh, know in, in a bad way and you know uh, shy away from it so I think uh, the non-finishing part only made me want to do it more yeah. than before the hunger increases yes. uh, tell us how the last year has been in the sense from you know the end of Dakar last year to getting to this year's event um, all the milestones everything that you had on the way you had injuries on the way as well but uh, how has that last year been leading up to this oh the last year has been very very hectic you know I had a major injury uh, uh, in the Dakar last year um, I had to go through many uh, go, th go through many surgeries just to just to be able to walk firstly and then uh, I slowly kind of made it back to the bike and then um, I got into this event called Pan Africa in uh, Morocco uh, where I had another injury uh, which took another two surgeries for me to be back in shape uh, going up to the Dakar till the last month you know it was a little skeptical but then I it was, uh, close, right? yes, the was very very close uh, I, I uh, going into the Dakar also I was nursing a uh, few injuries but uh, physically I was uh, like uh, physiological way I was I was fit uh, just that I didn't have a lot of time on the bike other, other than that I, I was training a lot I was training uh, like physically I was training I was I was going to the gym I was cycling so um, phys physiologically I was fit but uh, it cannot replicate uh, how much time you spend on the bike so there was always a skeptical way like you know would it be okay would it not be but then but then uh, you know we approached Dakar uh, in a positive note saying we'll just take it from how we start yeah. so uh, I started it very slowly and consistently did not uh, try and do uh, did not try and see what level I was at um, because you know my uh, I could have started much more uh, harsher but you know I just had to preserve myself I knew it was a long long race because we had to go through uh, the same thing for almost 12 days so I just wanted to preserve myself uh, start slow and see how how my hand and how my leg would uh, hold up and uh, slowly from then uh, I started feeling better as as, as the race uh, progressed and uh, that's that's the way we got into the race completely you know um, I know it's a cliched question and I know I've also asked you this before but especially given your experiences and especially the last year um, there are of course a lot of people who are going to be watching this saying you know you've got to be some level of crazy to want to then get back on the bike get back into that scenario where the same thing can happen again yeah. um, you're not the only one of course there are others who do this yes but it's still a very select set of people yeah. uh, is it special kind of crazy <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so you know I think uh, when you're here even walking on the street is crazy you know you, you can be hit by a car and you can you can have a fatal accident as well but uh, uh, you know this is what we do and this is what I've been doing for a long rest of the time and uh, I think uh, you can take uh, this kind of uh, risk for uh, re realizing your dream and uh, that's I've a got measured risk I mean you know what yes at stake. exactly yeah. that is always a calculated risk that you want to take but uh, like you said sometimes you know it's okay and uh, sometimes it just ca catches you uh, like the last uh, injury that I had was not a big crash so maybe few kilometers before uh, the injury that I had, I had a major crash and I just walked away from it. You know, I, the bike was mangled. And, uh, the, it was a really high speed crash, but not not much, not not a scratch on me. But then uh, another 20 kilometers into the stage, I had this, uh, you know, s stupidest of the uh, jump, which I was actually looking into the road book and trying to navigate. And then there was a broken dune. Uh, I, uh, I kind of got into that place a little more faster than I had to. Uh, so I couldn't really break and I had to jump the dune and uh, the gap was really big you know so when I landed uh, uh, the sand was soft and the bike wouldn't move so all that speed kind of came into a stop and then you know I kind of hyper extended my ankle and broke it but uh, like you said it's uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's your luck sometimes you walk away sometimes it gets you but I think it's all, uh, it's all good experience and uh, it just makes you uh, realize that uh, where you went wrong and what you have to do not to be in that situation again and uh, work hard and get, do better.
Well, th there are thousands and millions of people who, of course, track all of this and, and love that about, uh, or the spirit about you. Uh, the team uh, and the bike. Give us a sense of how that progression has been over the last two, three years. Uh, the team, I should say, the team has just gotten better with the two brothers, you know, Mikhail Mej and Adrian Mej. They've been my uh, support system. I live at uh, Mikhail Mej's house. So, you know, his family, I, I'm like family, they treat me like family and we train every day. And uh, this year I've been training with his uh, physical trainer, uh, whose name is Cyril, uh, Cyril Ricky, who's, who's, uh, who's a world champion, uh, world championship contender, duathlon. Uh, and uh, my training has, has been uh, on point and uh, everything has been monitored and everything has been measured. And uh, I live in a very good place where I can just stay, hop on the bike and ride every day. So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of positive things, you know, like Adrian Medj uh, and Mikhail Medj, they, they, they are very experienced with the uh, racing as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I should say I'm, I'm fortunate to be around them and uh, learn a lot from them because they, you know, experience really matters and uh, uh, getting guidance from them makes a lot more, a lot, lot of things easier for me. So it's just wake up and do, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, we work the whole year for Dakar and when you when you go to Dakar it's not like ah oh, you have to do something differently so you wake up and you you know you there is everything sorted out so you just go through what yeah yeah follow follow your day so it's not stressful and this is what I've learned for, over the years and uh, I think it's helped me a lot and uh, I'm a better person now and uh, I think I got the finish uh, because <laughs> of that yeah and and uh, you know I can tell you that watching that progression has also been fun um, a very small aside I can tell you now is, um, and not that it matters because in the larger scheme it really doesn't, but I had the superstitious thing where every time there was a stage finished and you know we got news about you, I didn't say anything on social media this time. <laughs> it's like, you know, let it be one more, let it be one more. It was thrilling when we found out that, you know, you've done it. Um, the bike, how's it been? Oh, uh, the bike has uh, been really good, you know. Uh, my mechanic Prakasham has been uh, spending a lot of time uh, uh, in France, uh, probably more than me this year, you know, almost the year. Just he's getting spent. it right. Yes, you know, because it's uh, it's not a production bike, so it's, it's a prototype and uh, it takes almost a year to prepare the bike and it's, uh, like, like I said, everything is custom made. Uh, the tanks, the wiring, the suspension, the handlebars, the the roadbook readers, the the navigation tower. So Prakash uh, Prakasham has put in a lot of work, and uh, you know it's it's not just my sacrifice. I should say it's him also. You know he's he's been uh, he's been spending all the time there, uh, away from his family, away from India, and uh, I think the credit goes to him. You know uh, that uh, I had a I had a, a clean spec bike every day. And, uh, you know, uh, not just that, uh, and uh, even my team manager, uh, David Castro, has been uh, spending a lot of time uh, developing uh, the motor. And uh, this year we had a lot of difference uh, in the motor as well. We had, uh, we had a different gearbox, we had a lot more power because it was all uh, sand dunes and you need really, you, you need more torque. So they've been, they've been uh, uh, working a lot on the engine and I think uh, the bike is on point. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you can see it on the result, you know, we did have a few problems here and there. But other than that, I think... Uh, well, that's the nature of Dakar, Yeah, you know. But the whole talk about, you know, being in Peru and not going across different countries this time, um, there was almost an assumption that it would therefore be... Easier. A little bit easier, but no, it was, it was the only, opposite. Yeah, it was only harder. Tell us about, I mean, you know? yeah, which, which stage for you was exciting, which was daunting. Uh, uh, just run us through your highlights. I think the first week, the complete first week was really daunting. You know, the first day I was so like scared and I just wanted to get through the stage. And uh, the second day was uh, a little better than the first day. But the third day was when uh, it kind of got really daunting, you know. Um, Lack of visibility, there was a lot of stones and uh, it was on the fresh fresh uh, area. So a lot of stones underneath, you know, and square edges and the stones are like exactly hiding for you to get there. Yeah, uh, and this whole fresh fresh concept is something nobody here understands. Yes, yes. Just how fine that, yes, uh, you know, it's almost you know, absolutely. like... Absolutely, so it kind of looks like <laughs> flat, but then yeah. when you get there is when you realize the, 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 the terrain is like knee deep. And uh, inside uh, Fresh Fresh, there can be anything, you know, it can be a hole, it can be a stone, it can be anything. So on the third day, uh, it was really tough for me because I had to really control myself and hold, hold back my, uh, my style of riding and which was really tiring for me. Going into the marathon stage, I was destroyed. 
I was like, I, was, I had no more energy. Uh, the marathon stage was the fourth one. And when I was going into the, st uh, I was doing that stage. The, even the marathon stage was like that. Uh, we start early and then there was a lot of fog. So the visibility was maybe only like five to 10 meters. And uh, you know you don't really want to risk it. You know I've I've had uh, you know situations where I've uh, I had clear visibility and I've had uh, problems with with that. Yeah. So why so, take chances? Yeah. Or? You know, I'm, and I I always had this thing called uh, uh, this thing going in my head that I have to finish. <laughs> so you know, I kind of, yeah, you. I had to hold myself uh, back a lot, and I couldn't really get to get to a good rhythm, which kind of drained me completely. So uh, God does, does that? Sorry to cut you off, but no you know, problem. does that? Um, kind of foc help focus your energy and your mind to that fine, you know, like how Arjun had his eye on that, just the eye of the fish, that kind of thing, does that help you to keep uh, that eye on the prize? In see, sense? definitely, it kind of it kind of drives you to uh, keep there because even sometimes uh, when you're doing 300, 330 kilometers, it's almost six hours on the stage and uh, there are many things going in your head whenever, and you're alone and uh, it's just the bike noise and you're going in places and the terrain changes and the you have uh, no idea difficu what's yeah, yeah. difficulty changes sometimes you're like relaxed and you know you kind of start enjoying the stage and exactly right when you start enjoying it kind of gets a uh, little sketchy yeah. yeah you know you can yeah. lose focus on what you want and you you can hit a hit something which is not really uh, you know relevant and uh, you know everything can turn against you so there are there's a lot uh, going on in your head uh, for five six hours you know so yeah uh, it kind of gets hectic and then uh, uh, you kind of tell yourself you know breathe breathe focus you know focus this is not keep you it know, going yeah you keep it going just w whatever whatever you have to tell yourself like you know sometimes you have a bad day sometimes you you know tomorrow one might be a good one so just keep it keep it keep it together even if you feel really bad even if somebody passes you <laughs> you just keep it together Focus and get to the, the finish positives. line yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's how the first week went you know i was i was i was tired on the uh, going into the uh, marathon stage i was tired so right after i uh, reached to the finish i went to i, w I had a shower and i went to the physio and uh, the physio in dakar is like number 1 eh? like like the world class physio guys and they put me back in shape. So after that, there was no looking back. You know, I could I could charge really. Uh, coming back from the marathon stage uh, is when I started to get get back into my flow and feeling myself. And you know that kind of fear uh, concept kind of went off because I was I was already in that uh, situation for four days. So, the, so I was kind of yeah I was uh, I was kind of uh, I was. I was able to read the terrain better, you know. I, I could feel that uh, I kind of belonged there. Until then, it was like, you know, a little scary. I didn't want to take chances. I just wanted to, even if it was 70th or 80th, I, would just, I, would, I just wanted to get to the finish. Last stage, when you, I mean, that imminent sense that, okay, it's happening now, it's going to um, finally happen where you finish. Uh, what, what was going through your mind? Oh, to tell you, I think the last stage <laughs> was the smallest, but yeah. uh, the, the biggest for me. Yeah? Uh, because I was counting every <laughs> kilometer, it was just 111 kilometers. Yeah. I was just counting uh, every kilometer until 75 kilometers or something. I was, I didn't really push it. I was just riding, uh, you know, I, I was riding easy, uh, and it was reverse order. So I caught, uh, we uh, we caught up a lot of uh, so, uh, you know slow guys, but then um, it's kind of taking it easy until the 75th kilometer, I, I, I should say. But then 75th kilometer, I found my teammate with, uh, with a slight uh, problem on the bike. So I had stopped for him and I spent about 10, 15 minutes with him trying to sort things out. And then uh, uh, he wanted me to go. That was Mikhail Medj who was there. And then he, uh, he, he asked me to go. And then I was, I was with the fast uh, guys, you know, who started really, really last uh, behind everybody. So I was with the fast bunch. And that's when I kind of got into a flow and I, uh, I could really charge. With the, uh, the, 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 the second 40 kilometers, second part of the 40 kilometers, I could really do really, really fast. And uh, I think I finished maybe 31st or something. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, until that, I should say it was really long for me. And uh, uh, until the last waypoint uh, opened up on, on my GPS, I was like, I was just hoping this just gets over. I just want to, want to have this in my bag. I think uh, thanks to the marvels of technology today, that video that you did where you answered that question about how you were feeling at that moment, I think we literally got it minutes after you had finished. 
So, uh, so you know, that sense of euphoria and excitement, we didn't even know where your, what yes. your position was at that yes. point, yes. Uh, was, was very exciting. So once again, congrats. Thank you. Um, so, of course, I can keep talking to you, but I know that you also have other things to do today. Uh, as, you, as you now absorb this, you know, you've had your long flight back home um, and, and you've had some time to, let's say, let it sink in. Where do you go from here? What's the next immediate focus for this year? And then, of course, how soon do you start already thinking about next year's event? Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've already been thinking of the events that, that I've, I have to do. And uh, I just have like two weeks of layover yeah. and uh, my training starts right away. Uh, the, the plans of this year is not really uh, sure yet, but uh, TVS Racing will for sure make it, uh, make it official soon. So I think uh, with, the, with the results that we've had, uh, this year is going to be a lot more, uh, you know, uh, we will be doing a lot more races and TVS Racing will have a lot more bigger plans to, to be doing this year, I, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a teamwork, I should say. And uh, yeah, we'll see uh, from now on, we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll have a meeting and uh, we'll see. I have a few interests that I want to put my words to them. And then uh, we'll see what mu what we can do mutually and uh, what races that we'll do. Well, as always, you know that we've uh, got nothing but the very best wishes for you. Thank you very uh, much. And the team. I think it's excellent and very remarkable what you've achieved. We're all very proud. I've, um, I've, it's, it, it wouldn't be possible without uh, TVS Racing, you know. It's, uh, uh, I think I have the best team in the world uh, backing me up. And uh, it's not uh, just me saying it because, uh, you know, like you said, like you know, uh, I've had uh, a, a bad year, you know, to to be supporting somebody who's not been, uh, you know, performing and who's who's been having a, a bad time, and uh, to be with that person and to be, uh, you know, supporting and guiding them, and uh, always believing in me is uh, what I appreciate uh, them for, and uh, you know, I'm I'm really happy to be a part of uh, TVS Racing, and I think. Uh, we, we have a lot more uh, things to achieve and uh, a lot more things to do together. I'm, I'm sure you will. Yeah. And again, huge congratulations. Thank you. All the very best for an even more exciting year ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.